Christ and he's here in Sherman, Texas at 619 North Brand Avenue with a seat on Shaw. This is our minister. It's good to look out into the audience and see the family of God here today. It's good to see Brother Sister Walker here. Amen. Uh, Amen. Good to see you. Amen. As always, a wonderful Amen. blessing. Amen. We're thankful for you being here. If I'm, I don't want to miss anyone, those who may be visiting with us and just in general statement of your Announcements are, are as follows. Uh, at the Collinsville Church of Christ, uh, there will be a Ladies' Day program February the 10th at 9 o'clock a.m. For uh, further information, see the bulletin board in the foyer. For uh, Grand Avenue News, uh, the Outreach Ministry, next on Tuesday, the next one will be Tuesday. Uh, this is coming Tuesday, January the 30th. They meet from 6 o'clock to 7 o'clock p.m. in the Annex. The next ladies' Bible class will be February the 1st and on the 15th. Time will be from 6 to 7 o'clock. Next men's Bible class, or brothers' meeting, will be February the 4th and the 18th. And time will be following services on each one of those uh, on each one of those dates. Several days we want to ask prayer for. Right now we're asking the church to remember Brother Monroe and his family in your prayers. Brother Monroe lost his brother. Uh, and he's, he's been fighting this battle that he's been he's fighting for a pretty good time. But uh, we want to keep Brother Monroe and the entire family uh, in our prayers. Yes. And we ask you also to pray for the Briscoe family and Brother yes. Sister. Briscoe lost their son-in-law. Him this coming Saturday. Uh, please keep them in the Brown family in your in your prayers and the loss, mm -hmm. the loss of loved ones. Yes. So, so much is going on. Please keep and remember Sister Gillard, who just yes. recently they penalized her sister on uh, previous Saturday, and, uh, and so keep them in our prayers. Um, people are going on. Yes, yes. And a lot of times, sometimes people feel like when we say pray for us, if that's, you know, you feel like, I wish I could do more. But the power of prayer does what it's supposed to do. It does power yes. in prayer. Yes. Especially power in the effectual prayers of the righteous. Yes. A lot of people pray, but they may not get the effect of it. And I'm not calling out anyone in particular, I'm just saying, but the fervent effectual prayers of the righteous. Bible says avails much. So if you ask for prayers, if I ask you for prayers, I have to believe that, for one, that I'm living the life that I'm worthy to receive the blessing that God is going to give me through the prayer. And that that prayer will make it home to God and God will grant that blessing to me in his own shape, form, in his own fashion. So don't doubt it. Don't pray amiss. That means if you ain't right, you need to get right so you can talk to God. Because God is only going to look at that righteous prayer. And uh, then he will bless according to that. So please keep these that we have mentioned. That we have mentioned in your prayers. All of our sick and shut in. Uh, some are in today and not feeling well. Wanted to be here but not able to be here. Uh, you know who they are. I don't know all of them. We prayed in the back about some. But uh, please keep all of the sick and shut in that you know of. In your prayers, and I'll give them in, in my prayers as well. This time we're going to ask that you will bow with us as we go to the Lord in the word of prayer. Heavenly Father, God Almighty, this morning we come humbly bowed and wonderfully thankful. Knowing that God, because we are awake today and able to see one another and to hear one another and to be in one another's presence, that it wasn't for anything that we done, but it was all because of your loving kindness and your mercy. We thank you for that, God. We ask you, Almighty God, that we can take that blessing that you've already bestowed upon us and generate it in a fashion that we can bless someone else. We ask you, Almighty God, that we will continue to try our best to live the life that is pleasing in your sight. And when we find ourselves at fault or not living up to your expectation, your standard, that we will check ourselves and get it right before it's everlasting too late. As I already mentioned, God, we don't know where death is. We don't know when it's going to come. And because of that, Almighty God, let 
us keep ourselves in touch with you. In touch with you so much the more that when we ask, you will answer. In touch so much the more, Heavenly Father, that when we, we seek you, Heavenly Father, and we call on your name, that we can see your presence, Heavenly Father, in the things that take place after we ask you. That we can believe that what we ask of you, God, that we can receive. First of all, because we're living that life that you see worthy to bless us in it, but also because we're trying our best to bless someone else. We ask you, Almighty God, as we go through this service today, that all that we do be pleasing and acceptable in our sight. Bless your man, servant, for the shawl who has traveled the distance to be here, has prepared a lesson, Heavenly Father, to place on our hearts, that we pray, Heavenly Father, will uh, invigorate us, will motivate us, encourage us uh, to continue on uh, doing the things that are pleasing in, in your sight. And if we haven't been doing those things, to start doing those things that are pleasing in your sight. Amen. We ask you, God, to bless our visitors, they come out to this place or by our satellite to, to look in on this service today that when they when the services are over, Heavenly Father, they, and they leave, they know that they have been in, in your presence by our worship service that we give unto you. Now we ask you, God, God to guide, keep and direct us as we go forward throughout this day. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Camping towards Kenneth's land, first and the last stand of this song. Camping towards Canaan's land, first and the third stand. You have it, let us sing. I will leave this land of bondage with this earthly treasure. I'll journey to a place where there is love on every hand. I'll exchange a land of bondage with a land of pleasure. I'm camping, I'm camping towards Canaan's happy land. You know that every day I'm camping towards the land of Canaan. Never be 
chapter 15, verse 1 through 9. It's John 15, verse 1 through 9. And it reads, I am the vine, and my Father is the husband. Yes. Husband man. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit is taken away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purge it, that it may bring forth more, more fruit. Now ye are the now, that ye, now ye are clear through the word which I have spoken unto you. Yes, sir. Abide in me, and I in you, mm -hmm. as the branch cannot bear fruit of its right. Except it abide in the vine, no more can it except abide in me. Mm -hmm. I am the vine, and ye are the branches. He that abide in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Yes. For without me, ye cannot do nothing. Right. If a man abide in me, not in me, he is cast forth as a branch. And is with is withered, and man gather them and cast them into the fire, mm -hmm. and they are burnt. If you abide in me, in my words, abide in you, uh -huh. you shall ask whatever what you will, uh -huh. and it shall be done with you. Here in my Father, glorify have. Ye be bear much fruit, so shall ye, and my disciple. Amen. As the Father had loved ye, yes, sir. love me, so have I love you. Yes, sir. Continue in my love. The Lord listen to the reading. That's what the Lord message. Amen.
us if you will, page 14 in your book. Page 14. First and the last step of this song. Higher ground. <clears throat>
Amen. Amen. So I thank you for that. This morning is my prayer that there are those who are viewing this service by YouTube or streaming. Or you may be in the building who have yet to make the decision to follow Christ. And you know that you need to. I pray that God will give me the message. That God will give me the words that will encourage you to do just that. Yes. Not just think about it and plan to do it, but do it. Yes. Just walk forward and let it be known that you want to put your faith in Christ yes. and live for him. Yes. And be a part of his church. Yes. So this morning I have chosen a lesson that I hope speaks to our theme. As the last two weeks I have spoken to you from the subjects of let us not grow weary and well doing. And then last week I spoke from the topic of what name do you wear? And you run on to see what the end is going to be. So if God blesses us to reach the end of 2024, we want to make sure we don't grow weary in well doing. And to make sure we are wearing the right name. This morning lesson is pointing right at Jesus and how much he means to us. So as we look at the scripture text that was read in your hearing, John chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. All who are able to stand, I'm asking you to stand for the reading of the scripture. It was, verses 1 through 8 was read to you, but I'm going to read on the verses 4 through 8. The Bible says, Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear the fruits of itself, Except it abide in the vine. Except it abide in the vine. No more can ye. No more can ye. Except ye abide in me. Except ye abide in me. I am the vine. I am the vine. Ye are the branches. Ye are the branches. He that abideth in me. He that abideth in me. And I in him. And I in him. The same bringeth forth much fruit. The same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, for without me, ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch. He is cast forth as a branch. And is withered. And is withered. And men gather them. And men gather them. And cast them into the fire. And cast them into the fire. And they are burned. And they are burned. If ye abide in me, if ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will. You shall ask what you will. And it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. Look at your neighbors, a neighbor, a genuine religion. You may be seated. A genuine religion. We are living in a day when it is very unpopular to be dogmatic. Very unpopular to be absolute about one's belief as it pertains to someone else's belief. A day when people are quick to say, don't judge me when they do wrong. And you hear that a lot in the world, you hear a lot on TV when people do something that is not popular or it's not correct. The first thing they say is, don't judge me. They take the word judge and they apply it to what they want to apply to. They don't realize, if I'm going to correct you, I'm going to point out your error. But you say, don't judge me. Since when they do wrong, and they get in trouble for their wrongdoing, and you don't say nothing. Then they come back and complain to you and accuse you, why didn't you let me know? I thought you had my back. Well, you can say, well, you told me don't judge you. The Bible tells us to rebuke and to reprove one another in 2 Timothy 4 and 2. That preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. Here it is. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. If you do something wrong and I see you do something wrong, it's my job to come to you. But if you tell me, don't judge me. See, people who accuse you of judging them don't realize that's a tactic of the devil. To keep us from working together. To keep each other safe. See, if he can convince us not to point error out in others. 
that he will eventually convince the church to slow the church down from growing. Because people will do wrong, but nobody's going to point it out. See, Satan says that I can convince them and trick them into not reproving each other. Then they will attempt continuously do wrong. The people who are accused says this don't realize it's a tactic of Satan. Of Satan. Yes. Then there are those who say it's politically correct to be inclusive regardless of what one believes and what one thinks about his or her persuasion. To be politically correct just simply means I will not speak against your belief and you shouldn't speak against my belief. And as far as drawing the lines and being definite to the point of pointing out error and saying something is wrong and something is right. Many times you're getting some serious, serious problems when you do that. But I'm here this morning to tell you that I want to go to heaven. Amen. I want to make heaven my home. Yes, Lord. And I don't have time to try to be politically correct. Right. For it is my job as a gospel preacher to preach the truth. To tell the truth yes. of what God has said. Yes. So therefore I just want to go, you to go with me to heaven. All right. And the only way we can do that, it is that our faith and our religion must be a genuine religion. Right. When Jesus says that I am the true vine, yes. the word true simply means authentic. Mm -hmm. Which is another word for genuine. Mm -hmm. Jesus is saying I am the true vine. Yes. I am the authentic vine. Yes. I am the genuine vine. Yes. And yes, in the Old Testament, God chose Israel and planted them as a vine. Yes. But they disappointed him. Instead of them bringing forth good fruit, they brought forth evil fruit. Mm. And so God is saying through Jesus that I have a genuine vine. Mm. I have an authentic, authentic vine. I have a true vine. One that you can put all your faith in. Mm -hmm. One that you put all your confidence in. Mm -hmm. And notice he says, I am the true vine. Yeah. He uses the three letter word, the, T-H-E, which is a definite. It is a dogmatic. It is an absolute term, mm -hmm. which means one and only one. Right. He did say, I am a, I am a vine. He said, I am the vine, right. the one and truly vine, mm -hmm. which means that Jesus drew a line in the sand, mm -hmm. and nobody else can claim that. Right. Now, there are seven I am's in this text, written in this gospel, brother. Jesus not only said that I am the true vine, yeah. mm -hmm. he said, I am the bread of life, yeah. I am the light of the world, right. I am the door. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. Yes. And then he said, I am the way, the truth, yes. and the life. Mm -hmm. No man come unto the Father and said he come by me. Jesus is being very specific of who he is. He is everything to us. Yes. And if that's not drawing a line, All right. if that's not being narrow, if that's not being dogmatic mm -hmm. and absolute, then I don't know what is. Mm -hmm. What is? Know what it is that rules out everybody else. Jesus says, I am. I am. The only way mm -hmm. that you would get to the Father yes. and be saved. Mm -hmm. When Jesus says, I am the vine, mm -hmm. he's not literally a vine, but he uses it as a metaphor. In other words, if you understand what a real vine, a physical vine is, and how it works, Jesus said that you should understand what my relationship is to you. All right. If you know anything about a vine, the vine always has branches. And the branches always produces the fruit. If you have an apple tree, a peach tree, an orange tree in your vineyard, the trunk of that tree is the vine. But what sticks out from that trunk is branches. And it's on the end of them branches that the fruit grows. Well. Now the fruit won't grow unless it's connected to that branch. Right. The branch can't be that fruit 
And then he gets substance from the vine. Right. So that branch is getting the substance from that trunk of that tree. That that fruit is getting the substance from. <coughs> so as the branches always produce the fruit. And so the fruit is not on the vine itself. But it's on the branches of the vine. Right. And so the purpose of the vine is it gives life to the branches. Mm -hmm. To bring forth the fruit through giving of substances. Yes, in John 10.10 10, Jesus says... I am come that they might have life and that they may have it more abundantly. But let me tell you this morning, he is not just talking about physical life, but he is also talking about eternal life. Eternal life is distinguished from the physical life. You and I is going to die one of these days. The Bible is right. It is important unto men once to die and after this a judgment. This old physical body of ours is going back to the dust yeah. of the earth. Yeah. Whether you try to exercise, keep it alive, vitalize, keep it vibrant, taking all the vitamins, thinking that you are extending your life. But your body is still going back to the dust yeah. of the earth. What you and I must do when we think in terms of our, our, our extending our life, we must think about our life in terms of our soul. The Bible says, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world but loses his soul? What is it going to gain you to, to keep your body in tip-top shape that it does not age quickly, but you lose your soul? The Bible is right. The soul of man is that thing, that one thing that is in the image of God. This old fleshy body of ours, this is not the image of God. As a young child, I used to think that the body was the image of God because God said he made man in his image. But this fleshly body is not the image of God. All right. It's your soul. Come on. It's that one thing that is eternal, just as God is eternal. That's the one thing we got to make sure we take care of. Keep that in tip-top shape. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about the fleshly body. The body is going to go back to the dust of the earth. But that one thing that is the image of God is your soul. is the one part of you that will never die. When you go to the cemetery to bury your loved ones, you're not just burying your loved ones. You're burying them the shell. You're burying the temple or the tabernacle that they build in. Your loved one goes to the waiting place until judgment day. And it's important that once you die, you make sure that your soul has found a relationship that is rooted and grounded in the true vine, yeah. which is Jesus Christ. Yes. You see, a lot of people today just want to live for today. But you're going to think about tomorrow well. and think about it in terms of eternity. Yeah. Think about it. It's a shame for a man to live a few years on this earth, in this fleshly body, being successful, having all the money that he can get. Having the biggest mansion that you can build. Driving the fastest car that you can drive. But you turn around and die and be eternally lost. Jesus came into this world in the first place to point us toward eternal life. Amen. And I hope and pray that when you listen to Jesus and follow him. And know for a fact that he's the only way out. He's the only way to overcome the issues of life. But when you think about Jesus being essential to our eternal salvation, Jesus is crucial to our salvation. Without Jesus, we have no salvation. But he is very essential to our eternal salvation. Being the vine, Jesus emphasizes the branches. And when you talk about the branches, that's you and me. Jesus says, I am the vine, and ye are the branches. We are the branches that Jesus is talking about. And he emphasizes when he talks about the branches that you and me, you and I must abide in him as he abides in us. Jesus said that the branches cannot bear fruits of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. If we're going to bear fruit, we got to be connected to the vine. Without Jesus in our life, we will not bear any fruit, no matter what we do. Jesus said, without me, 
you are nothing. I am the vine, and ye are the branches. And he then goes by and said, if you abide in me, now watch this, and he abides in me, I will abide in him. If we abide in Jesus, say, Jesus, I'm going to abide in you. And he says, the same bringing forth much truth. For without me, you can do nothing. If you don't have Jesus abiding in you, then you won't bring forth in the truth. We must abide in him. So he can abide in us. <laughs> it's in Jesus that we bring forth truths. Because he is the vine that we get our substances from. <laughs> Since we are the disciples of Christ, we are the branches. We must take him at his word. Yes. And notice Jesus uses the word abide over and over in this text. Simply, he's being specific. <coughs> he is putting being specific by what he wants you to know. And, and abide simply means we must have an active part yes, in our salvation. We're not here hanging on to Jesus just to be hanging on and swinging and doing nothing. Right, right, right. We got a part that we have to play. Right. We have an active part in our salvation. And there is something that you and I must do in order to be saved. Now Jesus says, I'm going to do my part. Don't worry about me. I'm going to do my part. Yes, sir. It is you. You must do your part. Right. As a branch, you must abide in me. Okay. And that means, as a branch, you must continue in me. As a bread, it means you must endure some things while you are abiding in me. As a bread, it means you must remain in my word. As a bread, it means you must stay constant with me. I have never seen a bread separate itself from the vine on Monday and then reconnect itself on Sunday. And it still lives. No, that's not possible. If the branch is going to survive and live off of that vine, it got to stay connected to the vine. Right. Monday, yes. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then again on Monday. Right. Yes. But when you watch people, you watch us, on Sunday, we are at our best. Well, Attitude is great. Well, the generosity is great. Well, but then as soon as Monday comes, Come they connect themselves mm -hmm. from the vine. Monday and Tuesday. They are disconnected. But then here comes Wednesday, they reconnect mm -hmm. with the vine. Right. Then as soon as Thursday, they disconnect again. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Well. Until Sunday to reconnect again. Mm -hmm. See what when you live that type of lifestyle, disconnecting and reconnecting one thing you must realize and understand, you, you don't control on who connects you back to the vine. Right. Now you can control to disconnect yourself. But when you call yourself on Sunday, I'm going to connect on, huh. come back to God. You got those who won't go to Jari Long to Mother's Day, Easter, Christmas. <laughs> disconnect for the whole year. But it's God who got control of reconnecting you back. Yes. And you can come back to church all you want to. But if God hasn't reconnected you, you're not reconnected yet. Right. you got to stay connected to the vine Amen. constantly all days of your life. Right. See, when you disconnect and you sin, you disconnect yourself from God. And you go all year long and not reconnecting. Come back when you feel like coming back. Yes. But God read your heart. And God knows you're not sincere in your, in your comeback. So he got control whether or not he's going to reconnect you back to the vine. It's very crucial that we stay connected to the vine. For it's God who connects us back. Who has control. The branch we feed off the vine. And the vine gives us our substance. Once a man becomes a part of Christ. It is a relationship that lasts until that person dies. Once you become a member of the body of Christ. The church of Christ. You will constantly in relationship with Christ all the days of your life. Yes. Until you decide to disconnect. God won't disconnect you. You disconnect your own self from Him. And then even after you die, your relationship continues on into eternity. So as a branch, we have a responsibility 
to abide in him. And he said, I'll abide in you. Someone get, get John 15 and verse 7. If you abide in me. Well, hold on. Not yet. Someone may say, what does it mean to abide in him? Mm -hmm. Well, that, that's that Jesus tells us what it means. What does the Bible say? If you abide in me. If you abide in me. And my words abide in you. And my words abide in you. You shall ask what you will. You shall ask what you will. And it shall be done unto you. And it you. shall be done unto you. Yes, sir. So if a man say, I'm abiding in Christ, Jesus says that my words must abide in you. Right. You can't have Jesus without his words. Amen. The word of God is so important to this idea of abiding <laughs> in him. Right. And when you think of what it means to abide, look at John 15 and verse number 10. What does the Bible say? If you keep my commandments, you, keep my commandments you, shall abide in my you shall abide in my love. Even as I have kept, Even my, father's I have kept my father's commandments. And abide in his and love. Abide in his love. <coughs> so if we are going to abide in him, we must keep his commandments. Yes. That we may abide in his love. Yes. Then we look at 1 John 5 and verse number 4. Uh huh. The Bible says, For whosoever is born, for of, whatsoever God, is born of God, overcometh the world. Overcometh the world. And this is the victory this is the what? that overcometh the world. The victory that the overcometh Even the world. Even our faith. Even our faith. Mm -hmm. If you are born of God, you have victory that overcometh by your faith. Right. Now watch verse 5 of 1 John. It says, who is, who is he who overcomes the world? It's by he who believes what? That Jesus is the Son of God. And then back up to 1 John 5 and 3, what did the Bible say? Did I went too fast, please? Yeah, I was going to the next scripture. 1 uh, John what? 5, 5 and three. verse 3. Okay, and it says, For this is the love of God. For this is the love of God. And we keep his commandments. And we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. His commandments are not grievous. Yeah. Watch what the Bible says, for this is the love of God. All right. yep. that, that we verse, what? Verse 3. We that keep, we keep his, commandments. his commandments. And his commandments, and his are, commandments not are not burdensome. Right. So many people want a relationship with Jesus, mm -hmm. but they don't want to abide in his words. Right. And they want to keep, they don't want to keep his commandments. Right. So you can't uh, have an abiding relationship with Christ without knowledge of the word of God. Right. So many people need, need to see how the Bible speaks in turn of the importance of the word. Yeah. In 2 Timothy 3, 16, verse number 17. Uh -huh. See, all scripture is given by the what? The inspiration, the inspiration of God. And it's profitable for doctrine. And it's profitable for doctrine. For reproof. For, reproof, for correction. For correction. For instruction in righteousness. For instruction in righteousness. Look at this. God. Hold on. Right. In verse 16, we all scripture is given by the inspiration, which means it's given by God. And, and it's proper for what? Doctrine. But here's our word. Reproof. Yeah. The world says don't judge me. But the Bible tells us we got to reproof. Why are you going to reproof? For correction. Uh -huh. For the instruction in righteousness. What verse 17 says? That the man of God. That the man of God. May be perfect. May be perfect. Thoroughly furnished. Thoroughly unto furnished. Unto all good works. Unto all good works. Yeah. That the man of God may be complete. Yeah. Now let's emphasize this word complete. To be complete means that you are abiding in Jesus. But the only way to abide and be complete is that you go by the scriptures, the word of God. If you're going to be complete in Jesus, you got to be studying his word. you got to be learning and have knowledge of the word of God if you're going to abide in Christ. The Bible then says you are thoroughly equipped for every good work. I know you're probably saying that you're emphasizing how important it is to abide in the word of Christ and keeping the commandments of God. And yes, I want to make sure you understand that you must stay in the commandments of God. Right. I just think it's important that you understand that there is an objective standard right. by which you and I determine whether we are abiding in Christ. Mm -hmm. Somebody say, well, I know I have Christ. Well, the question is, you must ask yourself is, if you know you have Christ, are you abiding in Christ based on the commandments? Right. If you know you have Christ, are you abiding in Christ based on the word of God? If you know you're in Christ, are you abiding in Christ based on the scriptures? All right. Amen? Yeah. If the scriptures is not abiding 
die, and you're not abiding in, uh -huh. then you can't have a relationship with right. God. Right. Right. Well, you say prove it, preacher. I'm glad you asked me that question. You put me Second John, verse chapter one, verse number nine. Yeah. Whosoever transgresses, whosoever transgresses, and abides not, abide not in the doctrine of Christ, has not God. Has not God. He abides in, in the doctrine of Christ. He has both the he Father, both the Father and, the Son. and the Son. See, the Bible says, whosoever transgresses and abides not in the doctrine of Christ. Wow. If you're not abiding in the Word of God, and it's not abiding in you, I didn't say it. The Bible says you have not God. He that abided in the doctrine of God, of Christ, in the word of God, he had both the Father and the Son. You got to have the word in you. And to have the word in you, and you got to abide in the word. Just that you study for your, a test or for a job. You got to study the Bible to put issues of life. To find out what God is wanting you to do. You got to get in the word of God. Unless you abide in Christ and in the teachings of Christ, you have not the Christ. Somebody needs to understand no relationship with God unless you abide in the doctrine. Right. No relationship with Christ unless you abide in the teachings of Christ. Mm -hmm. See, we in the Church of Christ get so much criticism because we emphasize the Scripture. People say, I can't have a relationship with Christ. You can't have it unless you abide in the teachings of Christ. And I didn't say that, Jesus said it. And John reemphasized it in 2 John 1 and 9, as well in 1 John 5 and 3. When you talk about transgress, in 2 John 1 and 9, it says, Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine hath not God. Transgress simply means to go onward and, we, and beyond. And when you transgress, I'm telling you, that you're treading on dangerous ground. Yeah. When you go on and beyond what God has told you to do, you are treading on dangerous ground. What well, do you think? What does it mean to transgress? <laughs> think about when you men play football. They have rules. And the rules are the standard used to play the game of football. If you play basketball, they have rules. And the rules are the standards used to play the game of basketball. If you play tennis, they have rules. And there are rules, the standards used to play the game of tennis. If you drive a car, there are rules. And the rules are the standards used to drive that car. If you follow the rules, then you will have success. When you follow the rules, then you are genuine. And you are authentic. But if you get outside of the rules and standards that are set up, then you are no longer abiding. No longer are you genuine and authentic. If you don't follow the rules of Christ, if you don't follow the words of God, you are no longer genuine. You are no longer authentic. You no longer has an authentic or uh, genuine religion. So just because they say we live in a free country and I have my rights, I can do what I want. Now, if you want to have a relationship with Christ, Amen. you're going to have to abide in Christ and in His Word Amen. and in His commandments. Right. We must be genuine, serving in a genuine religion. Everybody needs to understand and know that when you do something in life, it's according to the rules. And it's the same way when it comes to your soul, your salvation. Yeah. You want to die and make sure that you're going to heaven. And to do that, make sure you stay in the Word of God. Stay connected to the vine. Make sure you keep his commandments. Right. If you want to go to heaven, if you want to find peace at the end of your journey here on this earth, after you have run on to see what the end will be, you got to come to Jesus and you're going to have to follow his words yeah. and follow his commandments. When you think about there being one church, there are a lot of people who criticize members of the Church of Christ for pointing out that there is only one church that one can be saved in. They say, well, what about my grandmother? What about my grandfather? They are good people. We are not saying that they are good, not good people. But it's the doctrine that they believe. If it ain't the doctrine of Christ, then it's not the right doctrine. And we take some of the criticism because we preachers, the one and true church, that one can be saved in. Well, here's the point. Where is it found? It's found in the scripture. It's found in the word of God. 
Now you want me to be a genuine preacher. You want me to be an authentic preacher. You want me to tell the truth. If I tell you the truth, I got to tell it based on what the word of God says. Yeah. And am I right about it? Right. Yeah. If I go yeah. by what I think, I can't go by what I feel. What does the Bible say? And when I go to the word of God, I hear what Jesus saying in Matthew 16 and 18. That and I say unto thee that thou art Peter and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I can't get churches out of that. I can't get them out of that. Am I right about it? He said upon this rock I will build my church singular and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it singular. So if I'm a faithful genuine preacher how many churches did Jesus build? He built just one church. And the Bible is right. So when I think about being genuine, when I think about being authentic, I have to be honest about it. That men and women today have to accept the fact that when a man is saved, that man is put in one church. Acts 2, 4 to 7, I prayed in God and heaven faith with all the people. And the Lord added unto the church daily such as should be saved. The Bible says the Lord added to the church, not churches. He added to the church daily such as should be saved. So if a man wants to be saved, he's going to have to have come to the church of Christ. Well, someone would ask, how did you get church of Christ out of that? Well, Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church. Am I right about it? If I got the church of Christ the same way you got Noah's ark, why did you say Noah's ark? You say Noah's ark because Noah built the ark. Well, I say Church of Christ because Jesus built the church. Yes. Am I right? Yes. The Bible is right. I'm going to have to stay with what the Bible teaches. And I know people don't like to hear this. But all of this denominationalism is not of God. All of this religious choices is not of God. That man has given is not of God. The Bible didn't give this. If you want to overcome and be saved, you're going to have to accept what Jesus has said in his word. And the only salvation is in the church of Christ. Amen. Where Jesus in his prayer to his father in John 17 verse 20 through 21. Neither pray out these for all. The but for them also. Which, also which, which shall believe, which on, shall believe, on, believe on their me word. Through their word. That they all may, that be, they one, all may be one. As our father art in thee. And I in thee. And I in thee. That they also, that they be, one also one may us, be one in us. That the world, that the world may believe, believe that thou hast sent, thou hast sent me. When Jesus prayed, he prayed that we be one. Yes. And when you look at the Holy Spirit, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 13, For by one, one spirit, spirit we all baptized, are we baptized one into one body. We'll be Jews or we'll Gentiles. Be Jews or Gentiles. We'll be bond or free. We'll be or free. We have been all, have made, been all drink, made to drink. One spirit. <clears throat> one spirit. Uh -huh. So when you think of the Holy Spirit, one. When you think of the prayers of Jesus, one. God specific in how many churches he built. The Bible says in Ephesians 4, 3 through 6, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of the priest. There is one body right. and one Spirit. Even if you are calling one hope, yes. or you are calling one Lord, yep. one faith, and one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in you all. Yes. God is telling us to be faithful to the gospel. Yes. Be genuine. Yes. Be authentic. You may not, it may not be popular, but faith in God is the way. We got to have a genuine religion. We got to be distinct from the world. And I hope my, my father won't mind me telling you this, but I remember uh, my father growing up, before he became a member of the Church of Christ, he was a member of a denomination. But after being taught the word, after him fighting against God. Mm -hmm. My father found himself, when he found himself, he was study the word of God and he wanted to prove them wrong. Mm -hmm. But when you try to prove somebody else wrong by going to the word of God, mm -hmm. God will let you know what is right. 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 So thank God that he honestly accepted the word of God right. and became a member of a church of Christ. Yes. I benefited from that because now I'm a member of the church of Christ. Amen. My son and my daughter benefited from my father accepting in Christ. Because they are a member of the church of Christ. We got to have a genuine religion. And we're going to find ourselves at the end of the road. We run our race to see what the end is going to be. We got to have an authentic 
a genuine religion. All right, now, no, no. If you don't have a genuine religion, then at the end of the end, you will be in some trouble. Yes. God, Jesus built one church yes. and one church on yes. And he come back for his one church yes. and he compared it to a bride. When a man marries a woman, he marries one bride. Yes. Christ married the church. He come back for his one bride, the uh, one church. Yeah. If you and you truly learning streaming and you believe what you have heard this morning, Find your church of Christ somebody close by. Tell me you want to be baptized and add to the one church you read about in the Bible. Yes. If you're in the building here this morning, you're not a member of the Lord's church. You have yet to accept to follow Christ. Don't wait. Don't hesitate. Don't plan to do it. Come forward. Let it be known that you want to follow Christ Jesus and give your life over to him. And by being baptized into his one true church. Yes. If you have fallen short of God's glory and you have sinned this morning, this is your opportunity also as well to come back to Jesus. Get on that bandwagon head to heaven. And God is faithful to forgive you of all of your sins. Yeah. If you have anyone to request, why don't you come to Jesus this morning? Don't let Satan hold you back. Yeah. Don't let Satan tell you to procrastinate and wait and put it off. Well, do it next week or I got to take care of some things first. Well, Get into Jesus Christ. Yeah. And let him help you take care of the things that you need to take care of. Have hey, anyone need to request this morning? Why don't you come to Jesus this morning and get us there? We sing the song oh, of invitation. My door is standing,
I come and ask some prayer for uh, my family. Uh, the oldest uh, uh, read the, in our duly days in Scruggs, Miss Scruggs, she was 89 years old. She was the mm -hmm. oldest one in the family. So y'all pray for my cousin, Felix, and uh, the family. But they gonna have her funeral at the same time we're having my yeah. son-in-law. So mm -hmm. y'all pray for my grandkids and his kids that they will get through this uh, funeral on next Saturday. And pray for me that I'll be there for them and tell them the right things that's going on. But y'all just pray for us and that we do the right thing. Amen. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Settle head out when she passed away. She did remember her this Saturday. Just keep family prayers for that. Amen. 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 You don't keep me in prayer. I've been dealing with a lot of pain and a lot of things for stress. And uh, I just need God to keep praying for me. Amen. 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 against you, hold against them no longer, and Father, just bless them that they understand why they sin and won't do it no more. And Father, bless the ones that's going through sickness and pain, and Father, just hold their hand, and just guide them, keep them, keep them strong, and Father, just bless them as they go through this pain. Yes. And Father, bless the ones that's going through death in their families. Mm -hmm. And Father, yes, I know it's a rough journey, but we all got to go that way. Yes. And Father, just bless them to make it through without hurt, harm, danger, traveling grace. And Father, just bless the family. Mm -hmm. And Father, just bless all of us that we're going through problems that we just make it through without you. all the dangers that's going on in the world like COVID. Heavenly Father, just bless this nursing home that just dealing with this COVID because these elderly people just, I don't think they can deal with it that much. Yeah. Heavenly Father, just hold their hand. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, just thank you for all these men blessing you in store of Congress. All men blessing you have in store. Mm -hmm. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. It's time to come for you for the communion. We take the Lord's broken body and shed blood. I will read from First Corinthians chapter eleven, verses twenty-three through thirty. It reads. 
For I received the Lord, then which also I deliver unto you. That the Lord Jesus, same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. At the same manner also he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is new testament in my blood. This do ye. You do, do ye, and often you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do serve the Lord's death till he comes. Wherefore, who shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be given to the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, so that he may eat that bread and drink that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come humbling ourselves before your throne, Father. Thanking you, Father, for your darling Son who gave up his life, that we may have the right to eternal life. Father, I come to ask you to bless this bread and to bless this cup. Father, bless those of us that would take of it. Do we understand the reason why we are doing so? He's blessed and wish your darling Son, Jesus Christ's name. Now we come to part of a circle to give back to the Lord. I've been reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 1 and 2. And it reads, Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given orders for the church of Galatia, even so did ye. For the first day of the week, there is one of you laid by him in store, as God has prospered him, that there be no gathering when I come. That's what you Father. Father, once again, we approach your time, Father, most times we know how. Father, we want to thank you for jobs or whatever income that we got coming in, Father, that we may be able to give back to you. At this time, Father, wish you bless the offerings. They go for spreading the gospel and the edification of the church. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name, wish you blessings, our blessings. Let the church say amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Shaw, for the job. Well done. Well done. Amen. Always appreciate the, the teaching in your lesson. Amen. You explain and make sure that it's broken down so that uh, the simplest of minds like mine can understand. Amen. <laughs> so we appreciate you so, so very much. And Sister Shaw, as you have already mentioned, with regards to your wife traveling with you, uh, every day may not feel the same way. We feel not kind of feeling well, but may not come with you on that day. She may not be feeling very well, but like trying to, but she comes when she can. And we always appreciate the fact that she shows up to support you, brother. And so continue to pray for both Brother Shaw and Sister Shaw. Yeah. Right. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah. I'm just glad we were able to be with you here. And uh, by signing love and had strokes to the nose at mm. the same time. So we rushed out.
distance, turn around and come back and beat the snow before it got to me. Amen. But God is great. Yes. I'm saying to you, continue to pray for us. And I thank you, Charles, for the great message. Yes. Thank you all for what you've done. Amen. Oh, yes. Dwayne. That's Nashville Christian Institute. Mm -hmm. uh, his mom uh, had eight kids, I think it was, mm -hmm. and no husband. And so when we moved to, to Shawnee, we just kind of took up helping him to get his clothing and all that mm -hmm. ready. His mom died this mm -hmm. past week, and he mm -hmm. called and asked me if I'd be there with them in that service. Mm -hmm. And so I, I will be back here Sunday.
the 25th of this, yeah. of this month. Yeah. He, he may not be like me. I don't care how, if you know how old I am or not. I want you to know how old I am. God bless me to be that old. Yeah. And I'm thankful for it. I'm happy to be. Yeah. I'm just 65. I'm supposed to be 66 on the 24th of February. So I'm throwing that on out there. Don't give me any gifts. I'm just throwing it out there. <laughs> God continue to bless us as we go throughout throughout this week. And those that are traveling, please have a safe passage home. Let us pray. Oh, before, excuse me, I'm so sorry. Before I say this, it's so good to see Nathan. Amen. Young Nathan with him as well. It's, really good. it's so good to see that young man. He was in, that, in the gym with him one day, and I didn't recognize who he was. He, his big body shadowed me and he walked by me. <laughs> but I heard that boy like but he was a my own son, but it was so good. She took him. And so uh, it's good, good, good to see, see y'all too. Thank you for saying that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm here with uh, my girlfriend, Ida. Well, I'm at Harry College, so we Man. recently moved back Man. here. So it's All right. good to see you. Man. Welcome, Ida. Right. Welcome. Right. Welcome. Right. All right. All right. 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 That's why I'm going to over and reach over and say, see, you got that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't going to get up with you. <laughs> anyway. I'll oh, keep Brother Pinson. In your prayers, because I was with him last night. He had the intentions of being here this morning, so something <coughs> something happened. I'm hoping he wasn't sick, but uh, please keep this young woman in your prayers. Let us pray. Father God in heaven, we come humbly by the one for thank for once more again. We just we just feel great, Almighty God. Yeah. Because you answered you answered my prayer. Because I feel good, I feel encouraged, I feel uplifted through the message that was delivered, God, the thank message that was delivered on Mother Charles' heart, through the Holy Spirit, and it did. It's work for me. Ooh. I thank you for that. I thank you for the message and the messenger. Ooh. And I pray, God, that not only myself, but we all that have heard it will apply it to our lives where it fits. And uh, if it makes us feel good, then that's a great thing. If it makes us feel a little subconscious, that's a great thing. If it makes us feel guilty, that's an even better thing that we can get it right before it's everlasting and too late. Heavenly Father, we just ask a special prayer. Just, uh, just an umbrella over this whole congregation. You've heard the request. I don't have to go by it back and, re and recall and recount anything. You already know what we want from you, Almighty God. And I believe and truly believe that you are God that answers prayer. And so we ask God that hearing what has been said, grant it to all those, Heavenly Father, that are willing to be blessed and that you're willing to bless. God, keep it direct us until the next appointed time that we shall meet, Heavenly Father. Let us all con con continue. Uh, to conduct ourselves, that of the members of the church, conduct ourselves as members of the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. As we represent the, the Christian life of the Father, let us do it with, with love and with humility, and let us be gracious, and let us be ever more merciful to others as you are merciful unto others. Mm -hmm. Now be with us as we go forward throughout the furthest of this week, and this is Jesus, your Son, our Savior's name, we pray and ask it all. Amen. 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 When do they come on? When do they come on? Who? Two of them. Who? Which one? It's two of them.